Hello, hello. All righty. Welcome to this simple little broadcast about getting started with beginner blues riffs. Maybe you're this obviously is designed for somebody that is limited in bending, doesn't have like a full, you know, uh, control over all your draw bends. Um, but you're interested in playing improvising and blues. So this idea, um, again, is a really good fit for people that just have control of, let's say, single notes. And if you don't, then spend some time. Whoa, there's my reminder to make sure I went live. Um but yeah, if you don't, make sure that you can get clean single notes. So maybe before I jump right into a couple beginner blues riffs, I've got a C harmonica here. If you're going to pucker the harmonica, I want to give you a solid, solid tip. This for anybody that's going to pucker ever at any point in time. To get the best tone possible as a pucker player, you've got to focus on getting it in your mouth. So before we go through the riffs, just make sure... Look how far my lips are over the comb. I mean, over the cover plates. <laughs> Just like you're going to whistle, but push it into the pucker. Once you've isolated these notes and you can slide on the soft part of your lip, notice how soft that is. That's what's lubricating the harmonic and allow you to move. It's really the interior, the inside of the lip. And once you get that flow going, these riffs are going to help you sort of develop really good foundation to have some basic templates to play blues. So let me just play a couple of these for you and then I'll break them down. I'll go ahead and type them out in the um, video description when I finish up here. It's going to be a fairly short lesson, but let's just see what we get out of this. I'm going to try not to bend. There's no reason you can't use other techniques just because you can't bend. So I'm engaging this head shake right here. I'm playing two draw on this C harp, three draw, four blow, and then I'm engaging that four five draw back and forth by moving my head. And then I'm gonna blow on those holes four and five. And then I'm going to bring it down towards the three and four draw. Now, if you don't like that and you're like, I can't warble, my timing's off, convert this just to single notes like this. Think about the phrasing. You know, in other words, a beginner can still focus on these musical concepts without engaging this higher level technique. You just take your time and get the phrase right. So I'm playing two draw, three draw, four blow. Make the four blow quick. Don't hang out on that four blow. That's you're pretty much out of key when you're just hanging out on that four blow, like on a one chord in a 12 bar. So just blow four or just and we bring it down to the three draw. All right. I'll type these out in the video. Just try to follow along by ear if you can. No bending, again. And then I'm going to give you a strategy for how a, a beginner should consider evolving into that intermediate status. You know, how how do you – I'm going to share that with you in a minute. Let me not get ahead of myself. Here's a good one. Again, the phrasing is a big part of it, the way in which I'm laying out the notes, how much time I'm spending on them. Similar area of the harmonica. We got two draw, breathe in. Three draw, in. Four blow. Three draw. Four draw. Later on, you're gonna consider, I guess I could say it now, you can consider how you're going to move to another level, you know, if you're playing an inter intermediate or advanced level, you'd have to do several things. But the most obvious choice, the first step is to figure out how to integrate the bends. As you learn to bend a note, where would a good place be for that four bend, three draw, half step, etc. So today, every time I'm playing a three draw, 
you'll convert that down the road if you can play that and do a half step bend on the three because that's a scale note. And then instead of just four draw, practice going four bend, four draw. So this lick would convert to just two little bends and all of a sudden it's very bluesy. I'll go back and discuss the bluesy versions in a sec. Let's just play from the sixth blow, the root note, the tonic up top here in the scale. Just play six blow, five draw, four draw. Scale, where we're just playing part of the scale. Now, if you take this idea six blow, five draw, four draw, and move back up five draw, six blow, that's what I call these nice little stair step and you're kind of moving down, moving up. But notice the grouping of notes the way I played it. I kind of sped up towards the tail end. The phrasing is what we're paying attention to probably more than anything else today because anybody can play the notes. To make it sound musical, you've got to, you know, play it in time and try to get that phrase down. It's actually the four and the five draw on the way up that get pushed together. Got one more simple little riff and then we'll discuss like some ideas to get these moving again with other, where else can we put the bends in? All right, five blow, if you wanna write this down, if you've just, if you've got a pen and paper. Again, it'll be in the video description. Five blow, four draw, three draw, four draw. There's not enough people using the five blow anyway in general in second position starting these ideas coming from five blow. So five blow to four draw, three draw, four draw. Pretty straight, right? We don't get a lot of blues out of just playing it clean, but here's the phrase. Now, if we just played bend on the four before the draw and made that three a bent note on the half step. And then we got a nice riff. Or even into the bend from the four draw. I like that better. So I'm letting the four draw dip into that four draw bend if you're a bender. Try that approach and then three draw half step, lift it out towards the blue note, almost clean. And then four draw. Okay, here's the way I see it. You, as a beginner blues player, the very earliest memories I have of improvising in the world of blues harmonica was this. You know, just, I was so high energy because I didn't learn how to control my heart that at that point, my breathing was off. And what I did was just try to play less. I had, a, I actually feel like looking back, I probably played it pretty smart because my playing was very simple. There, were, there was no flash because I didn't have a lot of technique and I didn't have a lot of riffs built up. What a beginner can do is just stick on a note, play these long notes, play a long warble, shape sound, slow down and sort of figure out a way to communicate something with more of the rhythm and the syncopation, the accent stuff. I did a whole workshop on this recently and that was, I was trying to teach this art of sort of taking the concept of syncopation where we're playing around with these rhythmic accents, like taking a traditional melody, we play a riff one way and then how many different ways can I place the ac accents differently to change it up? And a beginner can do this. You can do it with your tongue. <laughs> You can really change your timing quickly with the tip of your tongue. So practice and get your tongue in shape. And other things you can do are just play it simple. Stop trying to move around so much and focus on your draw notes. If you're playing second position, C harp and G, you've got to focus on the draw notes. Those are the notes that you're utilizing the majority of the time. So... Um, Here's one bonus riff for this is the the most generic sort of non-bending blues riff I could think of, right? So 
So if you were a beginner, you'd just go four blow, three draw, two draw, and then maybe use chords to go. Out, out, in on the one, two, three draw chord. And then slowly you're converting the three draw to that half step. I'm going to bluesify this one slowly. Now I'm going to change the chords to something bluesier. See how I'm doing that though? The template remains the same, although I did add a couple notes at the end, taking the liberty to sort of extend it or change it a little bit. That's one draw, two full step bend, one draw, two full step bend, to two draw. So that, that riff is actually the more bluesy version of it's just similar. It's not the same notes, but it's a similar uh, cadence or whatever in the riff. So the intermediate sort of, you know, uh, I'm a man or hoochie coochie, whatever the, the song is that I can't think of. This one draw, two full step bend, one draw, two full step bend, two draw. When I was a young boy, etc. The real version of the rip, there's 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 recorded versions of of two muddy water songs, where that rip, that generic riff, that kind of thing. I'm just adding a three draw in front of the riff. That's recorded in a muddy water song. I don't have I don't have it all on recall here, and so are these types of riff. But I'm a man. Is it I'm a man? If somebody can chime in, if they know, that's first position. So I just want to point this out. You will find as a beginner that along the way in the journey, you will often find yourself thinking, why aren't these notes on my harmonica? And half the time it's because you're not able to bend maybe where they're bending. The other, the other one has to do with um, not realizing that they're playing it in a different position or scale work. Does this sound familiar on an A harp? Because that's the real way that um, I'm a man is played. I think it's I'm a man. I'll double check. I'm usually often wrong when I sit, quote things, but there is a famous Muddy Waters song that has that riff, and you've got to learn it in first position or you don't sound like it. What does a beginner do? They can't play those. They don't want to go because that's not right. So they would grab the D harp in second position, same key. Uh, actually, that's not true. Yes, because we played in first position, key of A on an A, and then we play an A on a D in second position, and you can get, you know. It's the closest kind of equivalent. Yeah, hoochie coochie, man, thank you. So, so what I'm trying to say to you is, as a beginner, you've got to use everything you can. You've got to use what you got the best you can, right? Because you don't have too much to shake at this point. And the people that have all the technique and experience and all this, they can relax and just play whatever they want. And it comes out nice and sound and real bluesy and sophisticated. But a beginner's goal is to communicate what? Emotion. And that's something that anybody can do. Even nerves can translate to a bluesy sound, you know, the shaky sound or whatever is coming out. So your goal is to just be brave enough to try to center your sound and stay somewhere simple. Take these little simple beginner blues riffs and start to insert bends between the notes or convert certain draw notes to bends. That's my advice today. Um, beginners, though, I don't really talk much to beginners on my channel. I don't address any... A lot of beginner concepts you will see in the video description I've put on sale, my beginner blues riffs. So you can download this, this lesson if you're a beginner and all the riffs are kind of sticking into the no bend zone except for the last two riffs in the lesson, which kind of push you to bend. Yeah, I'm a man. Bo Diddley. Of course, Muddy did 
I'm a man. Bo Diddley's one of my favorites. Speaking of Bo Diddley, learn yourself a Bo Diddley group. Get some of the famous Bo Diddley kind of guitar lines locked in your brain. Get some, get, you know, beginners again, a beginner can take one note and work on timing and phrasing just with one note, just like that two drop. It's not easy. We got to catch our breath, but you can work on these things. I hope some of the beginners got something out of this. And those that are intermediate players hanging out, thanks for hanging out. Um, quick stream today. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to go walk around. I will see you guys soon. Thanks for hanging out.